Well, my name is Sandy. And I'm Bill. And uh, we're here living the good life in tiny tranquility in our tiny house. And it's a real experience from, for us coming from large homes. So we've had to make adjustments and we love it. A lot more adjustments to come, but when you get to go through, you can, you'll get to see our new deck, which we just added, which is giving us the outside as well as the inside. So that's exciting for us. This whole experience is exciting and we're glad to share it with anybody who's interested in listening. One of the first important things in this little house is our doormat, which says it's our nest. And I want to tell you, that was a big find for me and I was excited to get it, but it really says a lot about Bill and I because this really is our nest right here. Well, this is our living room and um, some of the best parts about it is, is that there's not a lot of furniture to fall over. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and we think that's important. I, I think that part of being in a tiny house is learning how to minimize what you really need and what you think is important in your life. So this experience is helping us to think about everything that's here. Um, Multifunctioning, we think is important. And uh, we haven't been in this unit very long, so I haven't been able to do some of the little design touches that I'm planning on doing, but I like the feeling of mid-century and thus this mid-century chair and table has come into the picture. But living in this room is wonderful because as you can see, we have a lot of light and a lot of windows. And um, I think that's an important aspect to be able to see out and to bring the outside in. That's, that's why you can see our deck out here, which we just added. Um, actually, no more than three weeks ago, but it was the top priority when we moved in. So enjoying, as I say, not only the inside, but the outside is part of what you're seeing here. It's also our second bedroom yes. as the sofa folds out and becomes a queen size bed. So if we do have guests, we can have a bed for them. So it's kind of a TV room, fireplace room, bedroom, living room, viewing room. Multifunction, absolutely. The key word in minimalization is multifunction and tiny housing, that's important. These we normally always leave open um, uh, because as you can see, we have privacy behind us so we're not concerned about anybody looking in, so to speak. These we do have a tendency on the one side, which you'll see later, to close in the evening, but otherwise we like it open, as open as we can have it. We watch TV very rarely in here. Um, the TV in here is strictly for if we have company come by or something like that, or if this room becomes a bedroom, i.e. this bed becomes their bedroom. But we love to watch TV in our bedroom, and so that's our key spot. In here we like to have a glass of wine um, and turn on our huge fireplace here. <laughs> And, um, but the flicker of it gets you right in the mood to have a good glass of Chardonnay. Our fireplace is really great. It throws out a small amount of heat, which since your space is small, um, it heats quickly, but it's mostly the aesthetics. The flickering goes really good with the glass of Chardonnay. It's electric, yeah. We don't have any propane in here. We have no propane. We just have electric, but it functions perfectly. Totally electric. Uh, the heating system are heaters in the wall that produce enough heat for the chill and cold of Oregon easily. A little dampness here in Oregon on occasion. You need the heater. You know, once again, if you're not living in a great big house with great big ceilings and a lot of space, you can save i.e. a lot of money, which is important, I think, with people who are thinking of tiny houses. So it's economical. One of the things of our house that you see oftentimes in tiny houses is a loft. And we don't have a loft. It's one level with 
bow windows. And the bow windows, we think, really add to the open space feeling very much. Oh, I th yeah, I think that's important, Bill, it does. And then, you know, because I think with people that are planning or watching this particular, uh, your program, are trying to think about what are the items that they think would be important to them. And so if you're designing one yourself, you do have options. So it's important you try to think about ways that you can add those things. As Bill said, in this particular case, we have these windows are bayed a bit, and that gives you you know, uh, you may think that four or five inches doesn't make an inch a difference, but when you're talking about inches, and we are here, it makes a huge difference. We do not have solar in here. And I don't know, Bill, if that would be a possibility for us downstream, but it's so economical here when you're living yeah. in this small of a space. I don't think it would be um, cost effective, let's say. What we did, we took the 50 and 30 amp at the post combine them so we have 80 amp for the house and we've never tripped a circuit breaker now we're careful hair dryer coffee maker microwave we don't run those three at the same time but we have a Airstream trailer and we learned quickly how to move things around without tripping breakers. What he didn't mention is you have to trip a breaker and have all your power go down before you figure that one out. <laughs> so in other words, honey, have you got the toaster running in the hair dryer at the same time? Because if you do that, ouch. Common sense really prevails in the whole operation of a tiny home. You don't go to Costco and buy paper towels, toilet paper, and supplies like you would in a normal home. The storage is just minimal. There isn't much going in this particular section, but in this particular unit, we do have a lot of built-ins and possibly um, more than maybe some, but that was a priority for us. So it, within here, there isn't, but I'm planning on adding um, a small footstool in here. And once again, anything that I'm buying now, um, I try to ask myself, okay, is it just going to sit there or is it going to multifunction? So, when I put a small ottoman in here, which you can see it has to be relatively small, it's going to be one that has storage. So the top lifts up, then I can keep maybe some of the bedding and things that I would keep if a guest was here or put magazines in it. But just to have a coffee table or a box anymore doesn't work in tiny houses. You got to think about everything you have in it so you can take maximum advantage of every inch in space you have. You'll see throughout the house, how much additional drawers and cupboards and closets that we have that isn't probably in a typical tiny house. And uh, an example of that would be one lady knew we were going to Walmart and asked, if we would pick up a box of Kleenex for her. <laughs> and I said, do you want two boxes? She says, I only buy one at a time because I don't have the extra storage space. So to add to that, so if people are designing tiny houses, instead of thinking maybe about all the little cutie things you could put in, I would say, you know, if you have to give up a little space um, in an area that you might have done something aesthetic and in its place, think of storage, because otherwise you could be down to one box of Kleenex on every trip. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, we can we can actually have three boxes of Kleenex here, so we're really feeling like we're living the big life. <laughs> yes, it's a mansion with three boxes of Kleenex, that's for uh, sure. I just think that, you know, eventually I'll probably add maybe a couple little more touches, but I want to stay with the mid-century look because I think it fits. And um, this one's a, a little more um, rustic looking, but we like it as well, so. The previous owners put new windows in and opened it up and we were lucky to find this unit facing the woods as we are and the ocean is just block away. So we have the best of both worlds, green and the ocean and it works out great. Um, the room you're looking at right here, this massive room that will sit 12, is an example of our dining room and um, you can see here there are four chairs but there's something I'd like to draw your attention to. No matter what we pick out, I think in a tiny house, it has to be either a drop leaf or a pull out because that'll give you some options if in fact um, either you or ourselves decide we're going to have four people over as we did this last weekend. So it's a drop lift leaf as you can see this will drop down it's it's basically only about 22 inches when it's dropped but when it's out I can sit four people around this very tiny space and um, it may not be big enough to do that great big Thanksgiving dinner I used to do but one thing for sure it gives me some options and Bill and I can have some people over for a cozy very cozy little dinner so this is basically the dining room and behind me we were talking about storage and you can see there's a lot of it built in here um, there's drawer space there's cabinets and um, aesthetically I haven't had enough time to do some of the things I'd like to do in here but I am letting this little place talk to me and I think that's important when you're in a tiny house rather than making a lot of plans on what you think is the ideal thing you want to do wait until you're in it and you've spent maybe a month or so and kind of let your house talk to you and tell you the things you don't have the things that you're finding that really do work so I had some aesthetic ideas on what I was going to do here. And now that we've been in it, I'm loving having this serving area instead of cluttering it up with things. Maybe, um, you know, when I'm eating and we have people over, I don't have a lot of room on my little table that will sit for maximum, but I can sure put a salad and I can put some hors d'oeuvres out here or uh, some bottles of wine or whatever. So the idea of having that cutesy, I'm kind of changing my mind. I'm kind of thinking, once again, every inch is important and space is important. So um, getting in the mood not to declutter is a really good plan in your early stages when you're thinking about living in a tiny house. You almost have to make a mental note when you're living in smaller spaces of each day, think about the things you used and think about the things you didn't use. And um, when we get into the kitchen, which is important to a lot of women and men too that like to cook, I have to go through and evaluate daily what things I think actually are important to fill my drawers with. And if it's not, and I'm thinking, you know, if I haven't used that for a week, I, I try to make a mental note of that and perhaps trade it out for something else that I'm missing. But that I think that's the key. If one thing comes in, one thing needs to go out. Otherwise, what's going to happen is the small, tiny spaces are going to get full and you won't be able to find anything. And you become frustrated with over clutter in a tiny house. Well, the bay windows jet out. It really only gives you a, maybe less than about five to six inches on the exterior. But from the inside space, what it does do for this table is that if I have a straight wall here and I give up five or six inches, this chair would need to be moved. Um, and you would end up with having the leaf on the table down and this would end up straight against the wall. So once again, I think it doesn't sound like a lot of space, but the bay windows are giving you a um, kind of a sense of anchoring. I, uh, perhaps that might be a good word from a design standpoint of view. It's anchoring the space because as you can see, it the tables, scale, and the windows kind of encompass one another. So instead of making this table 
out here in the middle of the room. This makes it have its own identity in this very cute little bit of jet out here. And it's a nice feeling when you're sitting here breaking the angle. It just, uh, it feels good. Separates that sensation from the rest of the room, which is very, very, you know, elongated. So it gives you a little bit of extra feeling of dimension. This is something that the other owners put had in here. And um, I kind of had to look at that from an aesthetic standpoint of view, because quite frankly, I thought, would there be something better I could do with that space? This is a music system. And it, we do have speakers throughout the house, so what we're seeing here is a music system. Um, and it has a place to put in CDs. It's a little bit bigger than perhaps something I would have selected, but now being in the unit and um, kind of enjoying it, it's fun to turn it on and, and now I'm not thinking to take it out. There is a board here above it and this board has a pen. So um, I might have written up there when you came in, welcome to you you know uh, so you can write little notes up here whether it's a grocery list um, or it's a welcoming sign so it's kind of staying I, I kind of like it now yeah. this was built in by the manufacturer it wasn't added later it was part of the original build so it's deluxe in the speakers. There's speakers also in the bedroom and CD USB so you can use it for multi things. But we listen a lot to music where people probably would have their TV on because we uh, cut the cable and we use uh, the Wi-Fi that's here in the park to stream Haystack, Pluto, Netflix, Amazon Prime and so we have cut the cord on the TV, so we're not watching Days of Our Lives or whatever. And that has been kind of an adjustment too. But we enjoy it. It's all in getting used to what you have. I, yeah. yeah, but you know now you with the, the electronics, everything is happening so quickly with electronics now. There's a lot of things that I think we always felt that we had to have. And when you know, you get a little creative when you're living in these things. You start getting online and investigating options. And when you do, you discover that not only do the options work, but on the bottom line every month dollar-wise, it certainly does help. It really helps a lot. I enjoy having the storage up above here. These have got glass in it, which makes it nice. And um, <clears throat> all the um, glasses in here were given to, given to us as a gift to kind of pick up the blue that is in here. And so um, I'm enjoying having this for storage. And once again, when we're talking about utilizing every square inch, if I had nothing here and I hung a big picture as we were talking about things multitasking for you in tiny houses the picture would have been beautiful on this wall and I would have loved it but then look at all the other things I would have had to give up <laughs> so inches on the wall space is important and not only your floor level is important but you have to look at every square inch of your wall space to utilize it because that's part of what you're buying and living in. And believe me, from a design standpoint of view, that's what I do when I'm doing homes. We always find places for art, but um, it, it's hard in here to find. And when you're in a tiny house, it's very hard. And you'll see that with some of the other ones. It's very difficult to find spots that you can hang art. And, I and I'm an art person, so I miss that perhaps. This is probably my second favorite place in the room, in, the, in this room, and since it's all kind of combined, but this is the kitchen. And this was a very important part of living in a small space. Um, as you can see, everything is much, pretty much full size. I've got a microwave here, which is full size, um, an oven here, and um, a double sink, and a window, which I love being able to look out no matter where, where I am. 
um, but it's tiny, but it really functions. There's just enough counter space over here. It's a little tight, so I take my chopping block and I'll put it over here when I'm cooking. And I can't seem to live without, and I believe me, I have no affiliation to this company, but if there's one thing I'm not traveling and leaving behind, it's my Instapot, because an Instapot and a tiny house are, is as important as um, extra tissues in the home. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, I can't live without it because I can do so much cooking in a, and accomplish really gourmet meals and I don't have to have a lot of clutter to do it. So giving up that space for that, it gets top dollar spacing for me. That's for sure. I can vouch for the good food. Yeah. <laughs> and I get very creative in an Instapot and anybody who's cooked in one, any woman will tell you it's a must. So I have that, and then I did add just the uh, small uh, little oven here, which is just for toast and so forth. But instead of a toaster, I felt that I needed to have the toaster oven because once again, it's multifunctioning. Toaster only does one thing, and this will do several things. So if I have to give up space, that's where it has to be. So that's what I did. Otherwise, it's pretty standard, you know. Um, there's a place here, and I've still got more room to add some things here, which it's always nice to know you have extra space you can continue to add. But um, I like having the extra space here. Lots of storage up above, as you can see on both sides, which is great. And um, again, one little corner here that we keep because having um, our coffee in the morning, we particularly like more of an espresso. So it is given a little corner. And that's a priority when we looked at things and had the house say, um, I'm going to listen to what we need and have it talk to us. And so this is our corner every morning. This gets good use. I can tell you that. I do have a full-size refrigerator here. And um, I think a full-size refrigerator is really a must. We've tried living with smaller ones. We've been in apartments where we've been for the summer or something and visiting friends. And they have a very small refrigerator. When you're in a tiny house, if you have to make so many trips to the grocery store, just to get your basics. It's, it's pretty tough without a good size refrigerator. So I have to say, I think that's a big priority in decision making. Particularly when it comes to the freezer element, um, I, I try to think about what we might need for you know three or four days in a row. And that's where the Instapot comes in because um, I'm able to use less quantities, but do leftovers so that we can have a couple of days. And I find that the freezer is very important because I try to stock for, you know, let's just say if I can get a week in there, which I can, for meats and so forth. So it, it's changed in that regard. Um, when I was living with a big, great big freezer, I had a tendency to overpurchase. And, you know, if the spare ribs were on two for one, I always bought the two. Now I kind of look at it and say, well, maybe one's enough. So again, the old thinking process is working when I'm in the grocery store. I use the cooktop a lot. Um, I don't use the oven very much, only because uh, it's a small space. And if it's really cool, it's, it, I mean, temperature wise, it's great to use the oven on a cool day in Oregon. If it starts to heat up, you can imagine the distance between there and there. It gets pretty hot when you've decided to do the 400 degree um, special glaze or something. So I try to uh, keep my cooking to either the top of the stove, um, the Instapot, um, or frying or doing something lighter on top of the stove. So yeah, I, I don't quite do as many elaborate things, but they're all good because I love to cook. So we do have a skylight in here and that has made a huge difference. Um, it was a, a big reason why we love the room. The skylight is well situated right in the kitchen, which is the place you need the most light. And we're lucky because um, our ceiling isn't flat. As you can see, we have, um, we have some nice detail in the ceiling. It's giving you that sense of height, which is good. But I think the skylights are a, a huge addition. And I would definitely say I would put that uh, as a priority item. If I was building from scratch, I would look at finding some key locations for those. As you can see, we're standing in our hallway and it's, um, it's a little snug, but it's enough room for a body to walk through. And off of that is our bathroom. Um, 
there there are two things about this bathroom that I really like one is it, there's a skylight and bathrooms in tiny houses have a tendency to be pretty dark and can be pretty depressing so the skylight helps and this unit is older so we're not up to the latest in all the appliances and features but the skylight is wonderful and the other thing that I think is a must and uh, you always have problems with people who want to build houses because they say that pocket doors do not work but if you look at how tight most of the time tiny houses hallways are if I had a door here you can imagine how difficult it would be to get in so many people I think um, that I've talked to have overlooked putting in pocket doors in their tiny houses and despite what some contractors say about them being difficult or problematic um, I have never found that to be the case and I've always made sure that I've had them and they're very very important particularly here so I think this is a big plus for this unit because it has that and I think the other big plus is it does have um, skylight which I think is great we have a full-size shower and a tub and um, I might add that one of the things that is in this unit is um, there is a handicap bar here um, and I think that's a good thing to think about uh, for people who are getting older because most of the time when they do the um, tub shower combinations now they do them with fiberglass walls around them and and these are this is a fiberglass this is a fake you know it's not real tile it looks like it but it isn't so if if a person is elderly or getting to the point aging perhaps that's the words to say since we do get older um, if you'll notice this bar is on the actual foundation I mean the um, sheetrock of the home and the reason for that is because you're able to secure it if you try to add one of these bars later downstream when you need it you cannot mount it securely against this type of a surface so in the planning stages I think it's important to look ahead and to think about what your needs may be later and um, this one's wide it's really not obtrusive but I have to tell you it's worth its weight in gold yes the toilet is basic has all the same functions that every other toilet has the only thing is, is that the lines are run through a sewer system here just like you would if you were in an RV so when you're living in a tiny house your setup is exactly the same you have a water hookup you have a power hookup and you have a sewer line which in this particular case comes off of our unit and runs in directly into the main sewer line so there's an extension on the exterior for that there are no tanks here very efficient on water we haven't yeah haven't had any problems with water and the water pressure here has been excellent which is wonderful we have I think our our water heater here is about a six gallon water heater now there's where thinking comes in um, if you're having a, a, if you don't have a dishwasher which in this case we do not and I think that's a good thing because you have a tendency to use a lot of hot water with a dishwasher if you have a six gallon water tank and you decide you want to take a bath you have a problem or if there's two of you and you, you normally there is and you want to take a shower two showers and you have a six gallon water tank and you have just run your dishwasher and you've used a lot of hot water you're not going to get a hot shower so in the process of utilization you need to think save on water if you're planning on showering or bathing mm -hmm. so you know you can see it's not the same as when you're living in your home I said a 50 gallon water heater and I would say that's pretty probably normal in smaller homes so uh, we're not talking about a whole lot here but it it works perfectly we have not had one cold shower yet so well there is storage once again here's wall space um, and uh, it could have been a flat wall but instead by golly there's wall space there is a little tiny bit of distance when you have a five foot bathtub shower combination there was a little bit of wall space that could be built into this and that was utilized it's just a corner but I got to tell you it's towel storage it's it allows you to have several boxes of tissues I can have three so you can have that in here as well so once again think wall space we have a window in the bathroom and an exhaust 
fan. And when you're in tiny spaces, fans, windows, to get air moving is important, I think. And uh, we open windows at night or during the day when the sun is out as quickly as a home like this cools off, it also heats up quickly. And good use of windows open and closed can save you in air conditioning costs, which we don't have here in Oregon. We don't need air. We have ceiling fans, and again, ceiling fans are important to keep the air moving. And I would recommend window in the bathroom, fans in the bathroom. We even have a heat lamp in there, so you don't have to heat up the entire house when you're showering or whatever. And again, we have two large ceiling fans and that keeps us cool or the air moving and uh, makes for good circulation. Where we are right now is probably a dead giveaway because there's a bed in here. And um, the good thing about the bed is that it is um, it's a queen, and that's pretty typical in tiny houses, unless you're living singularly. Um, but the big plus is, as you can see, I am standing, and there is room for me to move here between the bed. And if I had a bed that was up against a wall, um, making and changing sheets would be such a painful issue, and I can certainly relate to that, having traveled in our Airstream. So this is a, like a a big bonus for us to be able to be staying now in a in a uh, in our unit and be able to walk around our home and have space so uh, if you can design that in i think it's important um, we have uh, obviously nightstands on either side and once again in this particular case there is storage up above so you're utilizing that extra wall space that could be just totally and completely blank and does nothing so otherwise, it's pretty self-explanatory, except for the fact that the closet itself um, does have mirrors on it. That helps to make the room look bigger, I think. So if there's an option to do that, I would definitely do that again. Um, and uh, this particular closet does have some storage built in the very bottom of the storage area. So there's some drawer space underneath it, which makes it, which makes it nice to have that. Again, a ceiling fan and smoke detector and we also have a tv in here that's hooked into our wi-fi and that's what we watch yeah we're, we yeah. kind of like that you know get the netflix series going and you know right now we're watching imposters and we're just hooked on it so we don't want to miss the end of that one but um, it works great to have it in here because, again, the room becomes multifunctioning. You're not just sleeping in it. You can have the opportunity to watch TV. It's like going downtown to the drive-in theater. Here we are. <laughs> it's really cool. It really is. So, Again, um, we have a heater on the wall. We haven't used that heater since we've been here. Only the heater in the hallway and the dining area is all we've needed. So, and the fireplace. So, heating is not a problem. Yeah, and I think, you know, I talk to people that are in here and some of their units are smaller than ours and they have one heater and they kick it on and they say they have to turn it off in about 20 minutes because it's toasty. So... You're certainly not paying a lot for the uh, Again, energy. double windows for cross ventilation and mm -hmm. keeping it fresh and airy. 
I love it because I'm an air freak, so that window's open even though it's Oregon and it's cold. That window is open at night, so there you go. And luckily, as Bill said, the heaters work. So <laughs> the first thing that gets kicked on in the morning is that. <laughs> Otherwise, that's about it. Um, I might say that the way this unit was designed, which I think was sort of interesting, um, I might not have thought about this, but they did. They, there's storage up above the closet, and the closet, of course, comes into the room, but they left a little, um, just, just enough room up there to store a few things. In this particular case, I think there's some extra blinds up there or something, but instead of giving up the space, they said, Let's utilize it. And then so it happened again there. A catch. Yeah. yeah. Not for clutter, I might add. Just for that very important thing you can't figure out where it's going to go. So that's where that is. A lot of uh, electrical outlets in this day and age with cell phone chargers and so on. Outlets, if you're designing from ground up, add extra. And we have two there, two there, one there. There's, and we use them daily. Well, if anybody in this day and age doesn't have a phone they have to plug in, you certainly want to make sure you got electrical power by the bed because the phone's got to be there for sure. So, so that's a must. Well, this is our new deck, which has only been in for probably about two and a half weeks of which um, the wonderful people who did this for us did it in actually two days, which seems sort of unbelievable now that we're enjoying it, but they did do it. And um, with a, a tiny house, for the most part, the decks are not attached. Um, this is a freestanding deck, which means that the base of this is not physically attached to the house in any way. It's all, it's all on its own, which means that if you decide to move, which people do with tiny houses because we have wheels, and there are wheels on this one. Um, once you go, you pull away and the deck stays in place, I guess you would say. So that's what we're looking at here. Um, this deck is approximately 10 feet in width this direction, and um, uh, almost, it, well, it's actually 16 feet coming off of the entry area. That gives you some extra f uh, footage coming from the front door to come out. Um, and then it picks up about 11 to 11 and a half feet in this direction. So it's a nice size livable deck. Um, the secret to this one is um, twofold, I think. Uh, and it comes down to thinking about how much space you have even on the outside and how you might be able to utilize every inch of that. So for that reason, I elected not to do a standard size table. So this one is 37 inches. And instead of having a seven foot or an eight foot umbrella, which would overwhelm our tiny space, this one is um, a little over six feet. So um, it gives us the feeling what, which we want. And if we need to, we can always sit four people here once again. So pull the table out and you, you can have some company over. Um, and since we don't have a lot of space, we elected to just to keep the other chairs across and we have a new table ordered for over here, but in the meantime, we're multifunctioning with something out of our trailer so that we can use this for now. So um, the deck is a huge part for us. And with a lot of the homes, you can still do a deck, but uh, maybe not quite as elaborate as this one, but um, some platform that you can get outside and enjoy it makes your life so much more rewarding. And we have this great view of which we love. Of course, we love, we love this because we're so private here and the woods and just even the wild grasses of Oregon come and go. Um, fun to watch when the wind is blowing. It's sort of like looking at the sea out here sometimes. May look a little overgrown, but frankly, it's kind of part of the, the beauty of Oregon. I think one thing I'm grateful that is here is we do have a power outlet, which is 110 on the outside. And I kind of have visions being here at Christmas time and maybe being able to have a tree here outside instead of inside since there's no room and I'm grateful there's a power outlet because that I could use to, um, for us to enjoy a tree 
as well as if we end up with a barbecue, which I have a sense feeling we will end up with a little portable barbecue, I get to plug in if it's an electric one. Rain gutters are good uh, above the entryway. And it's not so important on this side, but over the entryway. And we also have access to our breaker box and hot water heater. And we've put protective covering along the side, but it's easily removable so you can get underneath if you need to. Mm -hmm. And get to your wheels because that's what's underneath here too. <laughs> You know, I hope we never have to move it. I hope it is, I hope it's here for, for as long as Bill and I are uh, blessed to be here. I, I don't think it'll ever move. I think it will stay here. But if we had to, you know, that, that is the advantage of being in a tiny home because you can take it with you. For both Bill and I, it's a, um, and we hit on this before, but it's a wonderful transition to um, have the sense of freedom. And I'm finding that having less is really more. It's a sense of freedom to be able to not be encumbered with so many of the things that we have collected and we all have a tendency to collect through our lifetime. So looking back now, I'm finding this is allowing me to find value in the things that are important and let go of the things that aren't. And I think that's part of tiny house living and I think that's some of the things that other people are feeling as well. There's more time to have more fun and less time to have to work. Yeah, I think cleaning, just the amount of time on a 4,000 square foot home that you spend in cleaning, you hear half hour it's clean. And every home for the most part, has a place to sleep, a place to bathe, go to the bathroom, cook, and a front room. Whether the front room is 600 square feet or 100 square feet, you can sit and visit in either one. But cleaning and maintaining a huge home where you really don't get any more advantage to eating, cooking, sleeping, and so on. And here, with the addition of the deck, we feel we have a rec room. It's just outside, that's all, but it's great. It's true, and one thing about cleaning, and women know that, yesterday, instead of cleaning, I got to go for a four and a half mile walk yesterday on the beach, and I wanna tell you, that was a wonderful trade-off. <laughs> I wouldn't trade that change for anything, and those are things that I've, I think I've passed up a lot in my life, is taking the time to enjoy what's around me rather than being encumbered by uh, the material things and too much, really too much. I, you really realize that you don't need all that to be happy and I think our tiny house is an example of that for both of us. Well, we really wanna thank all of you for coming and sharing with us our, our nest and maybe you've picked up a few hints if you're planning on building a tiny home, we would like to feel maybe you'll carry something back from some of our suggestions with that. But otherwise, thank you for coming and thank you for giving us the opportunity to chat and to share. Take the time to investigate online and companies and also view the kinds of YouTube that you're viewing today to familiarize yourself, educate yourself, because it is a transition 
and you want to make sure it's for you. It's not for everyone, but it is for us and we love it. So welcome to Tiny House Land <laughs> and enjoy. Yes. Life is good. Life is good. Mm -hmm.